On the education front, Senator Groney, uh, who is from North Platte, uh, chairs the Education Committee, but he introduced LB 640. We're still working through all of this, and, and uh, even though he's not in the, the room, uh, Jay Rempe, who many of you know, our senior economist, is working on evaluating um, these bills as far as what do they really mean for funding of education, as well as what do they mean for property tax relief reform. Um, you know, I, and I, I don't use those words relief and reform interchangeably. There's one thing that uh, relief is more of the immediate, uh, what should I say, band-aid uh, to uh, lowering the burden of uh, property taxes. Reform means that we're, uh, that would result in long-term structural changes to the tax code and then the tax structure in the state uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have to keep putting band-aids on things year after year after year, but uh, we actually get structural reform in place that uh, sets us on a trajectory that truly reflects uh, the economy and uh, the proper balance of paying for all of the government services that, that our state chooses as priorities. Going back to Senator Groney's bill, it's a three-pronged approach. It limits uh, property tax dollar funding of schools to 60% of need. Um, the, the technical term of that is the local effort rate, uh, but uh, it would uh, say that uh, you'd start with the, the benchmark of where a school is spending at this at this point in time. Let's say it's a million dollars. I know their budgets are larger than that, but let's say it's a million dollars. So it would limit 60% or 600,000 of that to come from property taxes. Schools then would receive the next 30% uh, or 300,000 dollars from the property tax credit fund. We, we're still trying to figure out if this actually results in any real property tax relief, but uh, what it would do, I mean, in, in the areas that get these schools that get the 30%, uh, you know, it could, uh, but uh, we don't see the, the uh, provisions in the bill yet that uh, stop the, the rate of growth uh, in, in the education spending or, or other areas. But uh, so going back to, to Senator Grody's bill, uh, and we do appreciate him uh, pushing hard on, on these types of reforms, uh, but uh, you know we're still working through the details. So that uh, next 300,000 would come from the property tax credit fund, uh, which is being distributed for property uh, tax relief already. Then the last $100,000 to keep the school, basically to hold them harmless and, and keep them funded at the same level that they're currently spending, that remaining 10% or that $100,000 would have to come from property taxes, but it would have to be authorized by a two-thirds majority vote of the school board. Um, for those schools that are nearly 100% funded by property tax, um, you know, this, uh, the taxpayers of supporting those schools could be seeing uh, an, an increased uh, or, you know, a reduction in property tax load as long as the, the tax levy didn't go up uh, in other areas. Um, you can also see there's a caveat that uh, there has to be a public hearing. Uh, it puts a little bit more, uh, it gives the school boards a little bit more authority than they currently have over some of their budget or some portions of their budget. Uh, but it also uh, gives uh, the public uh, the opportunity to, to weigh in more on school budgets. Continuing in the education arena, uh, this could have been, you know, we could have put this in the, the valuation category as well. Uh, sometimes they don't fit neatly into to one particular area, but that's okay. All of these things add up. Uh, you know, we, we need to, uh, we have a master plan as to how to fit all these things together. Uh, the biggest challenge is getting uh, 33 senators to agree with us. Uh, but uh, LB 144 introduced by Senator Kurt Friesen. This would change, uh, it would reduce ag land values uh, for TOSA, which is the 
tax equity equal to our education uh, opportunity security act um, which is the school aid bill uh, you know but uh, right now ag land is valued at 72 percent of its fair market value for the purposes of calculating resources under the state aid bill Senator Friesen's bill over the course of four years uh, would reduce that to 20%. Uh, in the first year, it would go to 50%, second, 40, third, 20, or excuse me, third, 30, and then in the fourth year, it would be 20%. Uh, so it would limit uh, uh, the, the valuation of that property. The other part of the equation that each of you has to examine in your particular districts is then what happens with the, the tax levy. Um, if there's room to increase the mill levy, what does that do? If you're up against the ceiling, um, then is the state going to step in and, and fund uh, education the way it should be? And that's a lot of what we're pushing for is that the state step up and pay for more of the education than it currently is rather than dumping that on the property owners. LB 265, uh, once again uh, from Senator Friesen, this would uh, be characterized as a foundation aid package. Starting in the first year, it would provide a minimum of $1,500 per student of state funding to every school district in the state. Second year and move it up, I believe, to 2,000 or 2,500. But over the course of three or four years, it would get it up uh, uh, well over $4,000 of state aid to each school for uh, on a per student basis. 